Hi, I am so excited. This is way too hot. I am so excited to share with you how I made my small foot cake. Apart from being completely adorable, this cake is really easy to make because it has a very simple structure. The body shape is simple to carve and this shaggy fondant fur, very forgiving. I'm so obsessed with him. I've been taking him everywhere around the house with me. We had breakfast together. We folded laundry together. And he even watched me sleep. I'm completely in love with him. Look at these 10 little toes with 10 little toenails. I'm just going to cover his ears, if I can guess where they are. Fortunately, he doesn't quite realize that soon he's going to be stabbed in the back. But for now, I'm just going to enjoy my Yeti. Now I'll show you how to make him. I'm starting by finding a picture of Mega. I want a simple structure that won't require extensive hardware. It doesn't exist. So I'm opening him up in Photoshop to play around. I'm lassoing his left arm, copying and pasting it into a new layer, and then replacing his waving arm, which would need a much more intense support structure. I'm pushing his legs together for a wider base, and then printing him out on two pieces of landscape paper. Taping him together, trimming around him, Checking the measurements of my picture, I can see I'll need two 8-inch layers at the bottom, then two 6-inch layers for the narrower part of his legs, and then another 6 layers of 8-inch cake for his arms and body. My Migo is going to be 16 inches tall. Is it too late to have second thoughts? Yes! Level your cakes if they're domed on top, because it's important that each layer sits perfectly flat on top of the layer below, for structural stability. Divide your cakes if you want more layers, and I recommend drizzling or brushing them with simple syrup, which is just equal parts of water and sugar cooked together until the sugar dissolves. This keeps the cake moist. Then wrap your cakes in plastic wrap and freeze them overnight. I'll explain why in a minute. Wow, that's a lot of cake. <coughs> now it's time to make the structure. I have a 14 inch cake drum and I need a hole in the middle for my central dowel. I'm using a drill because I love power tools but you could use the pointed end of a kebab stick and wiggle it around until it's wide enough to fit the dowel. Perfect! My dowel fits perfectly. You'll need another cake drum the same size as the one with a hole in it, a wooden dowel, and some super glue or a hot glue gun. Use the glue to stick the cake drums together with the holy one on top. Then fill the hole with glue and stick your dowel in. This way it won't slide out through the bottom of the board. If you're transporting your cake, it's a good idea to use a thicker dowel. Weigh it down with whatever heavy objects you have and leave it overnight. Migo is going to be made up of three cakes, each about five inches tall. The first will be the legs, then the bottom half of his body, and then the rest of him. Each cake will be sitting on a cake board with a hole in the middle, which the central dowel will go through to make sure they don't slide around. The boards need to be a little bit smaller than the cake, so they don't stick out after you sculpt or carve the cake. Check the width against your picture and trim the boards. Now I'm checking my measurements and writing down what order I'll need to stack my 6 inch and 8 inch cakes. I've whipped up two batches of my 4 minute buttercream and I'm adding an entire packet of Ghirardelli white mocha. I thought this would be a suitable filling and frosting for a yeti that lives in the freezing mountains. I'm tasting it and oh my goodness, it's delicious. Oh, holy wildness. Okay, time to build some cake. Spread some buttercream on your first cake board. This will be the base of the cake. Place your first cake layer on top and spread it with filling. Don't be too generous or it will ooze out with the weight of the yeti on top. Continue with the rest of your layers for the first section of the cake. Keep it less than six inch high for stability. So this is the base of my Yeti, his legs up to where his hands start, about mid thigh level. Hold your picture up to the cake and indent around it as a guideline of where to carve. Then cut those pieces off, turn the cake sideways and do the same thing again. This is the reason I freeze my layers before assembling the cake. Unless you have a huge freezer, you won't fit the assembled cake in there. Room temperature cakes are difficult to carve because they crumble but frozen cakes hold together well, 
so assembling and carving is easier after freezing. Check the size of your next baseboard and trim it if you need to. Then use it as a guideline to continue carving your cake, aiming for a sort of cone shape. Narrow at the top with a wider base. Trim your base cake board to the size of the cake and then put the cake in the freezer if it fits or in the fridge. For the next cake, this will be the baseboard, which we just used as a guideline for the top of the base cake. The cake above this will be on this baseboard, so we need the top of this cake to be this size. I'm going to carve this cake upside down because I find it easier to have the narrowest part on top. I'm building the cake the same way as before, layering cake and filling, placing my cake board down as a guide, and carving the cake roughly at first and then trimming, trimming, trimming until I'm happy with the shape. If you're enjoying this tutorial, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe. I share a new cake decorating tutorial every week. Flip it over and you have the second part of your towering Yeti cake. Add your final layer of filling for this cake and then use the smaller board from the bottom of this cake to indent this layer of filling. This is for later. Then build the final top cake. Now we're ready to build the Yeti. Let's do this. Use masking tape to secure the first cake to the board, lining up the hole in the cake board and sliding it carefully down the central dowel. Down! Of course! Now use boba straws or dowels to create pillars of support in the cake to hold up the rest of the body. Push one in, pinch it where it meets the top of the cake, and pull it out and cut it to the height of the cake. Line up another three straws and mark them and cut them to the same height. Then push them all into the cake at the midpoint between the central dowel and the outer edge of the cake. Put four more boba straws or dowels into the next cake and then line up the hole in your cake board to slide it onto the central dowel. Make sure your straws or dowels are within the indent you made using the small cake board that this cake is sitting on, which means that the straws will be resting on that board for support. Now you can carve a bit more to tinker with the shape. I'm making the body flatter at the back. Our Yeti is almost built. Or is it? For the top cake, hold your picture against the cake and indent around it. Then carve your cake, starting with a triangular shape and then cutting out a rounded back, giving him a head, setting his chest back a bit from his head, and then trimming to smooth out the shape, which started off very angular. Place him on the last cake board and trim the board if it's bigger than the cake. It's a good idea to use a leveler to check that each cake is perfectly flat before and after adding it onto the central dowel. Slide this cake onto the central dowel and voila, we have the beginnings of our Yeti. I know what I saw and I'm gonna prove it. Carve out the arms and hands and cut a line between his legs. I'm starting to see Amigo. I saw a monster! No, you did. Yeah, I did. No, I did. No, I saw it. Now cover the whole cake with frosting. I'm using the same white mocha buttercream that I used for the filling. You want enough to cover the cake and lock in the moisture, but not a thick coating because it will squish around under the fondant. Leave the frosting to firm up and set, and meanwhile make Migo's facial features. His eyes are a very pale yellow, so I'm rolling out and flattening two ovals. It's essential to have the picture next to you for this because the accuracy of these features make Migo recognizable. Now I'm doing all of the black parts to get that colour out of the way. His mouth, with very thin fondant so it doesn't bulge out of the face, and two little pupils for the eyes. Now my blue parts. Two ovals for the eyes, and I'm sticking them onto the yellow parts of the eyes with a bit of water, and then sticking the pupils on. Roll a long log for the lips, thinner for the upper lip than the lower lip, and attach that to the mouth with some water. Now with white I'm 
making the little white reflective bits in his eyes and then his teeth. White teeth. Migo's teeth are very distinctive, with the long one on the left, his right side I suppose, and the little one spread out on top. Brush the mouth with some water so that they stick, and since the fondant is still soft and pliable, you can use a knife to move them around and resize them if you need to. I'm making his horns with more blue fondant, little cone shapes, and I'm curving them a bit at the ends. To make the eyebrows just roll out little logs, flatten them, curve them to match the shape of Migo's eyebrows in the picture, and then trim the ends into points and make the inner end flat instead of rounded. And there's his face! Adorable! I am! Roll out ten toes, getting smaller as you go out from the big toes, and then roll ten little balls and flatten them into circles, and cut a triangle tip into each one for the toenails. Stick them onto the toes with a bit of water. Feet that were amazingly freakish! Arrange the toes first. Brush the board with a little bit of water so they stick. Then roll out white fondant about a quarter of an inch thick. I used five pounds of white fondant for this cake. I'm starting with the legs, wrapping my fondant around and trimming it to sit underneath the hands. I don't recommend covering the whole cake at once because the fondant will be very heavy and likely to rip. I don't have quite enough for the back, but it doesn't matter. You can use as many pieces of fondant as you like because we're going to turn it all into fur and blend the lines so you won't see the joins. Mark the indent between Migo's legs using your finger or a ball tool. Then use blue fondant for the hands. Cut out rectangles of fondant, push them against the frosting and around the thumb and fingers, and then trim off any excess fondant, trying to cut as close to the white fondant as possible so you're not exposing any of the frosting. Then use the back of your knife or any thin object that isn't too sharp to indent lines between his four fingers. Do the same on the other side. It looks like Migo's wearing blue gloves, but don't worry, we're going to change that soon. Wow. wow! Now for the fur. I'm starting at the bottom, gently cutting through the fondant at the edges to make shaggy fur that sticks out over his toes. Then working my way up with the same texture all up his legs. I'm using this fondant tool, but if you don't have one, you could use a blunted toothpick or even the prongs of a fork. It's important to do this while the fondant's still soft so it'll pull up the fondant like fur. If you wait until the fondant firms up, you'll be scratching it and it won't make any texture. Do the back as well, and then roll out the rest of your fondant to drape over the top of the yeti. Work quickly because the weight of the fondant will tear if you don't attach it to the frosting fast. Arrange the pleats around the cake, trim the fondant where it meets the fondant already on the cake, and don't worry if the fondant tears because we're going to turn it into fur that disguises every imperfection. If you feel more comfortable, you can do one piece of fondant around the middle and a third piece for the top. You can see my fondant's torn here, but I'm not worried about it. I'm just continuing to trim the excess fondant, and then where the fondant tore, I'm placing the bottom part over the top part to join it, and then brushing it with water and sticking a skinny roll of fondant along the tear to seal it. I'll turn that into shaggy fur in a minute. I'm cutting the fondant neatly around the hands so the fingers poke out. Sticking down the belly, and finishing up with the back. You can add extra pieces of fondant if you have any areas where the frosting isn't covered up. Just stick them on with a bit of water. Now rough up the fur that hangs over the fingers, pushing down all along the edge of the fondant to make it shaggy. I'm doing the same thing where the white fondant meets around the belly, cutting little slits into the sides of the top piece of fondant to rough it up and hide the join. Since the fondant is still soft, it blends together perfectly. Doing the other hand, and now I'm going to show you how to hide any imperfections. Which is impressive! Where my fondant tore and I sealed it with a string of fondant, I'm using my tool to scratch into the fondant, turning it into fur, and it joins with the other fondant into a seamless patch of fur. Even if you don't have any tears, it's a good idea to add some extra patches of fondant to your cake to give it a realistic, shaggy, uneven texture. I'm continuing to indent fur all the way up the front of the body, leaving the head alone for now, and then doing the same on his back. You can see at the base of the fingers, the blue and white fondant don't quite meet, 
So I'm rolling out a string of white fondant and sticking it on with some water, and then indenting it, making the movements upwards and downwards so the fondant joins against the blue fingers and the white fur on the legs. Adding texture to the arms, and where my second piece of fondant meets the first piece at the side, and all over the body. I'm pushing the top of the face in a bit to make it narrower, oh boy. and then using my tool to make Nigo's chin hairs. Check the body for any imperfections and fix those now. Over here I have a bit of frosting showing where I was over-enthusiastic with my tool, so I'm going to stick on another piece of white fondant and indent some fur to cover the hole. Over here by the fingers, there's a blue stain on the white fur. I saw it! No problem, just to add another piece of white fondant and make it furry. Around the base of the cake, you'll have lots of sugar dust that comes off when you make the fur. You can brush it off with a paintbrush or a pastry brush. Now for the face, the best bit. Migo has some poofy hair on top. The top of his head! So I'm rolling out some pieces of fondant and sticking those onto the top of his head draping them over sideways to give him a little comb over. I'm adding a few strands of fondant around the sides of his cheeks too. Roughing up his chin fur. Now stick on his eyes. Arrange his eyebrows to give him that bemused expression. Slap on his lopsided grin. And now he just needs some horns. One of his horns should be broken, so now that the fondant is set, you can snap the end off easily and it leaves a realistic, uneven surface at the end. Perfect. Stick the horns onto toothpicks and skewer them into the sides of his head. Sorry, Migo. And we have a cake replica of Migo. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you love this Migo cake as much as I do. Remember to like this video and subscribe to British Girl Bakes.